we're now able to get 25 monos, 28 monos out a day, like literally six, seven times output compared to what we were before. Mm -hmm. We never fall behind anymore. Never. Unless something drastic comes up, we never fall behind. Yeah. Even a day like yesterday, which is a huge day for our overall sales, they got caught up by like 1 p.m. They got, <laughs> they got sent home early. Are you serious? They got sent home early because they were fully caught up. Let's talk customer service. Mm -hmm. We split up. So we had two customer service agents, if you want to call them. Mm -hmm. We split up their duties. One is specifically handling tickets now. Another one is is more so running like office admin at yeah. this point. So they she, have she's more of an office office administrator now yeah. than anything. Yeah. So so we found that splitting up the duties and having them accountable for one task mm -hmm. versus potentially having both agents accountable for multiple tasks of the same task. Multiple, multiple tasks. Yeah, there you go. Mo yeah, uh, rather than having multiple agents um, accountable for multiple tasks. Yeah, uh, yeah. How's that? And how's what, that working out? At what's this point? what's so? I know we were getting. I'm yeah. gonna cut you off there for a second mm -hmm. because we were getting behind on answering tickets and yeah. and uh, escalating tickets and in getting back to people and stuff like that. How's that working out? What's so interesting, and so this is gonna be across both customer service and other departments. What's so interesting is that we have the same, if not fewer people than we've had over the last couple of years. We are increasing our overall productivity in all departments by fucking leaps and bounds, probably yeah. at least 50% over the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, even with all those changes, everyone's so much happier. Everyone's so much less stressed. People are working less overtime. Why? It's fucking organized. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like that's people the are being held accountable at this people point. People are being held accountable. Because yeah. the thing is, is that when you're trying to, in, in, in roles like these, when you're trying to have like, let's say 10 different people all fucking sharing <coughs> balls as they're juggling, it just creates fucking chaos. Yeah. Right? And what ends up happening is that every task gets drawn out way longer than it's supposed to. So many tasks get, get dropped because no one knows who's responsible for it. And also, because there's so much muddiness, people can kind of get by with not doing very much yeah, they, because nobody's actually monitoring people them. People are pointing fingers at other people. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I didn't do it. Well, I didn't know. Yeah. You know, it's so not now, my job. Exactly. It's like the union environment almost. Mm -hmm. Like it's the same kind of thing. It's like I, I used to see shit like this like in the union all yeah. the time. Yeah. So now, lo and behold, is when we clean up everyone's like responsibilities. Like, for example, our um, warehouse supervisor, I got told today, so much happier. Why? Because one, he was in a role that essentially had way too much responsibility and way too much, um, I guess, yeah, responsibility. And then in the 0.01% of times he screwed up, which was not a very high screw up percentage, but it was so expensive for us. So lo and behold, when you actually have someone, you, you split the responsibilities that one person's handling this thing, one person's handling this thing, and then there's a double checking system. Lo and behold, error rate decreases, efficiency is increasing. Another huge thing was we had essentially two production managers that were doing things very, very differently. It just was, it felt like just a car that was fucking jerking like every yeah. single day. Just you weren't able to get a smooth motion. What was interesting as well is that both of these individuals were averaging 55, 60 hours a week because it's just to try to keep up. Now each one's averaging 40, 42 hours per week and we're getting way more out. Why? This person's focusing on just this. This person's focusing on just this and it yeah. just rolls so much smoother. Yeah. Right. Efficiencies. And, and even we're able to like add in things. Um, like one of the biggest issues that we were, not one of the biggest issues, but one big issue that we were having was just a constant inventory um, inaccuracies. Mm -hmm. And just we, we, did, we didn't have someone monitoring it really closely. When I walked in there yesterday, we had our new inventory manager with a fucking checklist going mono by mono, making sure inventory is correct. We needed that so long ago, right? And now like it, he's actually monitoring it. So one, it decreases theft rates. Two, it helps with that. If, there were, if we have any issues, for example, there was a, um, someone recorded a double run a couple of days ago, right? Put in 320 inventory instead of 160. It was caught within 24 hours. What would have happened before? We would have sold way down in those 300 units and we would have been screwed having all these orders that- I was that, gonna say that, yeah. Yeah. Never right. would have got caught. Yeah. It would have never got caught. Yeah. And so the customer, not to take full circle, customer service is now the same thing where there's a, now a smaller subset of 
responsibilities that one person's taken care of, lo and behold, the actual completion rate is much higher, mm. interestingly. And then in terms of overall admin things, like they're also just getting done at a much fa- better rate. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah. just like, and so w- doing all these things now is essentially allowing us to one, continue to identify any gaps in our overall production and operation mm-hmm. that will be required to get filled moving forward as we scale. Mm-hmm. Um, but two, it allows us so that everything's cleaned up now that we're like prepared to move, right? Yeah. Inventory is higher or overall. Cause so we actually had a, a guy that used to work in the warehouse this is another inter- interesting story. A guy that used to work in the warehouse maybe a year or two years ago uh, under our previous management. And back when we'd get four monos done a day, five monos, maybe there's three employees in the warehouse any one given day. And he just came back. And I think he was back in this week. And I recognized him because I was the one that actually hired him. Why did he just come back this week? Uh, he, I think he left like out of country for a while or something. Do we or had need, a personal... Is, do we need him to come back? The, here's the thing is that we... Um, we have a, a natural turnover of employees of the, well, one, some people are just naturally leaving, mm-hmm. but two, if people just aren't performing, we get rid of them and we bring in new people. Right. So essentially, and like, for example, we'll, we'll likely in the next probably week or two hire three new people, but we're also going to let go three or four people. Right. Just trying to get <clears throat> better people in because some whenever you're implementing a lot of these big changes, you have some people that just adapt to it right away. And some people get stuck as like legacy employees trying to do things the old way. And what we're doing now is we're like, no, no, no. Like that's the old way of doing it. You have to change or you're fucking done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that and that's that's what's happening right now. OK. And so he came back and he was a great employee back even like when we were a lot slower. But he, uh, so I was when I hired him like probably two years ago. And so he's back and he like recognized me and he's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, great, how are you doing? He's like, fantastic. He's like, wow, it's grown so much like in the time that I was gone. And uh, and when I was talking to our manager today, uh, he's like, yeah, him coming back in really showed the contrast of like everything that's like has changed over time for one we're now able to get 25 monos 28 monos out a day like literally six seven times output compared to what we were before Mm -hmm. we never fall behind anymore yeah never like unless something drastic comes up we never fall behind even a day like yesterday which is a huge day for our overall sales they got caught up by like 1 p.m they got got sent home early are you serious they got sent home early because they were fully caught up Come on. Dead serious on a day like yesterday. That's what I was actually going to ask you. Like, did we actually get caught? Do you know how many orders were uh, we had yesterday? Probably like 600, something like that. Would that have made sense? 600 orders? But anyway, so yes, yeah. 700, 750 <laughs> orders. Like it, and depending on what the average order size was, actually, because it was Korea Pier, it might have been smaller sizes. Yeah, that's what I was um, thinking. But it might even be closer to 1,000. Yeah. Fully caught up at like 1 p.m. Wow. Everyone sent home early. Wow. Right? Like, it's just the output is so much faster and like you go in there now and they're just fucking cruising <laughs> like one mono comes in another one's coming out another one yeah, coming in like yeah, it's yeah. just like so much faster it's yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. but also we have now some like on some days 10 people in there 12 people in there but it's just like it's so much faster and uh now people are only in there when we're needed exactly yeah, yeah yeah and uh <clears throat> and like yeah so like it's it's just that overall so yeah he's like uh, oh my gosh there's like a, a lot of changes and uh yeah our, our managers like made it very very clear hey this is like our new standard of how we're doing things like don't don't kind of get caught up in how it was before yeah and um we also had a few kind of like not great employees just naturally quit now that we're like pushing harder and setting higher standards and expectations we're writing people up and like all this kind of stuff people naturally that were lower performers are just kind of like calling themselves out Mm -hmm. so that's also kind of helping as well interesting so now when new people come in we got music blasting in there like super fast pace everyone's like remember back in the day like "Mm -hmm." oh yeah it was awful (laughs) yeah it was like oh my god now like people are fucking sweating back there because they're just moving yeah 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 right but they're also incentivized that they can go home early if yeah. we uh if we get caught up right interesting, interesting. so there's like the the motivation to to do that yeah so just overall and even just in terms of like kind of even other uh, areas of our business it's just improving as well because now that there's a centralized source of communication it's now like just yeah everything is so much smoother it doesn't yeah. feel like we're um <clears throat> so as we're preparing to move uh, i essentially even told like our two our manager and supervisor like guys if you want to plan some time off like this is pr- probably next month or two is if you want to take a couple of days off or whatever it is like now is a good time because when we 
go to move, we'll need every, all hands on deck. Yeah. Right. It, it's the sort of thing now where we could, in probably a couple of weeks from now, switch to a one shift per day for a couple of days. Cause like, that's how high our output is and how fully caught up we are across the board. Um, that like we could do that on like a Thursday, Friday or something and it'll be fine. Interesting. Right. I wonder yeah. if it even makes sense to do like a continental, like 12, 12 shifts or four shifts a week, 12 yeah. hours a day. Yeah. We could do something like that too. 10 hours a day. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they, if, if, if there's nothing else to do, you just go home early and then you got a Friday off. Yeah. I always, I always shit talk like a four day work week. Mm-hmm. I'm not shit talking the four day work week. What I'm shit talking is the fact that when everybody tries to you know, promote the four day work week. Mm-hmm. What they're doing is promoting four eight hour work days, right? I'm not trying to promote that. I'm just, I'm still advocating for the same amount of hours to yeah. get done, but I don't care if you want to work two days and they're two 20 hour shifts. Mm-hmm. It's irrelevant to me. Get the same amount of work done. I don't care how you chop up the days. It doesn't matter to me. Exactly. So if they want to work three days, but they want to work 12 hours a day, mm-hmm. I'm actually okay with that. Like that might actually be something that we do yeah. maybe moving forward. It's like uh, on, on that side of the spectrum, it's like firefighters that work seven 24 hour shifts in a month, yeah. right? Still your 40 hour work week is just like there's seven of them over the course of a month and yeah, that's it. Sometimes you'll have two weeks off at a time. Yeah, but they don't, I think the reason why they do that too is because they have to sleep at the, yes. they sleep there, right? So yeah. it's, it's a little bit, same thing with the pilot, right? Yeah. Even my, my pilot buddy, mm-hmm. right? When he goes away, Say for example, I had that ninety-six hour layover when I went with him to Scotland. Mm-hmm. He was get he got paid for the ninety-six hours, mm. right? Even though he wasn't flying for ninety-six hours, it puts yeah. him out yeah. for that long, right? So, um, same kind of situation. But yeah, I, I would be totally fine with if our employee base wanted to drop down to, you know, three fourteen-hour days or three thirteen or mm-hmm. you know four tens. Like I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. I, I don't care. Oh yeah. And like, that's <clears> the thing is that we'll continue to just adapt as we see demands shift. Like who knows, maybe at one point in time we need to run 24 seven, seven days a week. Yeah. Right. But like, it's just, we're always going to adapt depending on what overall demand is. And that's the thing yeah. is that everyone across the board, all managers, supervisors need to be able to have that mindset where they're thinking on their feet and they're constantly adapting to what we have currently yeah. going on. That might be a tough at the end of the day, though, that might be a, uh, an issue. When you think of it, the more I think of it, number one, well, we can't do that with shipping because people demand their products, right? Mm-hmm. It's so funny. Like the majority of people that call for something like that, like employee work life balance, and we want three days a week only, and we want four. But when I order my product, you fucking better deliver it. Like, well, okay, well, then. You can't only have your employee right. base work a certain amount of days. Yeah, maybe you split them up, yeah. right? But if you're a smaller employer, mm-hmm. you can't have like three cha- tranches of, you can't have like, you know. What, two people work day shift? Y- yeah, you can't like, like have these like, you yeah. can't have like, you know, two sets of employees working only, you know, Monday, Tuesdays, and yeah. then, you know, so on and so on, right? So, um, but to have, to, to allow that, Mm-hmm. And then implement it back in yeah. where, oh, hey, we're getting busier. So now you're back to five. Mm-hmm. That might really fuck up. That might really piss people off. Yeah. So it might not be a bad, it might not be a bad idea to just keep the five as a standard and go from there. Yeah. Um, all I'm saying is, is typically for me as an employer, I don't care yeah. how things are done as long as they get done. That is it. It's irrelevant to me. There you go. 